Hi, welcome, Simon here, and I hope you're doing well. In this video, I'll be doing a teardown on an Asus Republic of Gamers laptop. Here, you're gonna get to see on how to upgrade your M.2 drive. So if you're looking to add additional RAM, uh, memory or storage to your computer, um, then in this video, we'll be showing you on how to do that, as well as maybe changing out the battery and whatnot. So this assemble teardown video will be able to show you and I'll walk you through those steps on how to do it. All right, the first thing to do is to identify the model number here. Take a look at the back of your laptop. If you have the ASUS GA401Q, then you can follow along the video. All right, the first thing you need to have is a Phillips screwdriver. So this is a Phillips, which is the PH1, that is the Phillips Plus uh, 1, the screwdriver. Let's go ahead and remove some of the screws here. So if you're not sure where to buy the replacement parts, please check the link down in the description below. You can get them through Amazon or maybe through eBay. What I'm going to do is I will link all the tools that I'll be using as well as the, um, the hardware. So for example, your RAM, maybe the M.2. PCIe, those things would be listed down below in the description where it would direct you to either Amazon or eBay where you can buy the replacement from. Okay, so there's a lot of screws to remove, and those screws are pretty long, so be patient when you remove those screws. So the screws at the bottom are pretty short compared to the rest of other screws. One of the screws at the bottom right got stuck, but just leave it as is. Um, I think that screw is going to come out later on. Okay, the next step is I need to get in between that plastic right there. So I'm just using a tiny flat metal tool. See if I can get into that bracket. All right. and you want to come back here and use the plastic because you do not want to make a scratch or anything onto the, uh, the laptop. All right, so once you have that removed, you just have to pretty much pop it open. Once you remove the back cover, you can see your entire full laptop here. All right, so let's go ahead and ident identify a few, few of the things and before we continue removing them, here underneath is your M.2 drive. This is the NVMe drive. Here underneath is your RAM. This is a DDR4 RAM where it says PC4. This is where the battery is. Your CPU fan and the, the heat sink is linked all together. So the entire heat sink with the two fans, meaning to exhaust the heat to your left and away from you. All right, the first thing I like to do is to remove the PCIe. Get yourself that same Phillips screwdriver. Slide it at 45 degree angle and slide it to your left. You're gonna feel a little bit sticky because this is the heat pad, thermal pad, okay? So this thermal pad conducts the heat and disperse it to the motherboard. Now this hard drive here is running at 512 gigabytes. You can upgrade it to like one terabyte or two terabyte. It is all up to you. Now, on a separate note, if you're not sure what you want to do, either you want to do a fresh install, meaning that let's just assume that you bought a one terabyte and you want to increase the capacity by installing your one terabyte However, 
you want to keep all your information for example your windows your programs your games your settings your data everything to the new one terabyte what i suggest you to do is to get one of this which is the usb adapter for nvme all you can do is i mean do not use the tape this is just for demonstration purpose but you should have a screw that screw into that bracket you want to install that one terabyte here into this usb adapter okay well this thing was the original install here what you can do is you want to consider cloning cloning meaning that you want to clone everything over from the original hard drive to that one larger drive by plugging it into the usb okay so i make a separate video how to clone from an m.2 to another m.2 please check down in the link description below i made that video separately just for that all right the next step is how to upgrade your ram very simple you just have to push the two side clipper the two side clipper locks onto the ram you just push it away that's how it pop up at 45 degree angle and slide it towards your body here you can identify the ram by looking at this it says pc4 pc4 stands for ddr4 and this is 8 gigabytes running at 32 megahertz okay you can replace with this one it's a pc4 it runs on a 24 megahertz you want to try to match it with the 32 if you can but if you can't that's fine it's not really a big deal the computer will still work it still turns on but i like to match the uh, uh the same megahertz on the ram all right move on to the next part let's go ahead and disconnect the battery the battery is pretty much easy to disconnect all you have to do is just to lift it straight up and before you can do that you need to actually open up that little connector here so i'm going to slide it to your right and lift it up okay i apologize i did not say it clear in the beginning of the video is that this right here this little clipper the metal clipper it goes left right left right meaning when it's pushed to the left it's secure onto the connector if you need to open it you're going to slide it to your right okay once the thing is slided to the right then the connector connector can lift it straight up get yourself a phillips screwdriver and start removing the screws all right once you have removed the screws the entire battery will just come right off now the battery here is a good condition as you can see there's no lump it is not swollen it is on a perfect flat surface and it's great now if you want to find a replacement where to find the model number from go ahead and take a look here it says c41n1908 that is the model of this battery again please check the link down description below what i'll do is um direct you to either amazon or ebay to find your replacement all right move on to the next part this is your cmos battery the trackpad underneath here the keyboard cable and this is your heat sink all right what i'm going to do is i am going to disconnect and remove the heat sink here so there's a a little tape right here that is for the warranty void security stuff it's okay we are going to remove that screw we do not need them I mean we're going to remove the sticker we do not need them all right so if you feel like your computer is overheating or it's running too hot then more likely you may have the thermal paste being all dried up so hopefully uh, you can reapply with the new thermal paste on that there are four more screws on the other side of it
Okay, and continue removing some of the screws. And here are the screws that pretty much for the CPU fan. You need to remove them as well. So what you want to do is probably take a picture of the laptop, the internal part of it, print it up on a paper, and as you remove the screws, you might want to put the screws on top of that piece of paper that you just print out, so you know where the screw is going to go back to what location, so you're not missing out any of the screws. Okay. Now the next step is to push the connector down to your right. What I'm trying to do is to disconnect the CPU fan here. So I'm just trying to slide it down to the right if I'm if I'm able to do it. And this one here the same. I wonder, okay, let's go ahead and disconnect the keyboard, cable, all right, flip open that connector, slide that keyboard down, I think they tape onto it, please do not tell me you tape on the table, looks like they did. What else can you do with this computer here, huh? Can we even remove the heat sink? I was trying to show you guys on how to, uh, yeah, you can. You're just a little bit sticky on the other side. And of course you need to disconnect some of the cable. And the motherboard is coming right off too. So let's go ahead and remove the, this white cable. It's for the Wi-Fi antenna. Slide it away, okay. And here is your LCD cable, flip it. Just pull it straight up and I broke that cable. You can just lift it straight up, okay. And then see how much more we can remove the heat sink. All right, there you go. We still finally removed the heatsink. Uh, recap a little bit right after you disconnect that CPU fan connector on both sides, okay? And then the plastic here is covering up the LCD cable underneath, as well as on this side here, it's covering up the Wi-Fi cable. Technically, you need to remove both, both of them at the very beginning then you can just lift it up now the thermal paste is all dried up here as you can see it's all dry the thermal pad is dry as well these are the residual being stick onto the chipset okay and obviously the graphics card is really bad so you need to apply new thermal paste on it okay that's definitely for sure if you're not sure where to buy them, I'll list them again down below. I usually use this brand here, which is the MX4 Thermal Compounds. And I do have the Thermal Pads. They sell in a size of like this big. You just have to cut it according to what sizes you want. When that is done, I'm surprised that the motherboard is not even screw in so when you remove the back plate all those screws were actually holding down the motherboard great this is the cmos i'm going to leave the cmos plugged in because i do not want to reset my time so this is the keyboard and you know what i'm not going to remove the keyboard because i have a sense of a feeling that you can replace the keyboard how do i know because you can see that the keyboard has screws that 
holding down the keyboard let me put the keyboard back in okay so as you can see that the screws are here you see all those tiny screws they are actually holding down the keyboard so if you remove those screws you may able to replace the keyboard rather than replace the entire palm rest okay and if you remove the three screws one two three one two three you can dis detach the entire um, screen all right i hope that this teardown helps you if you have any question just comment below hopefully i can find those answers for you but i am going to clean up the thermal pad and the thermal paste and reapply them with the new one at this time here you might want to take the opportunity to ache and dust scrape off any of the dust on your cpu fan and make it look brand new all right thanks for watching any question comment below until next time bye now